this tutorial, we're going to make a simple mock-up by adding a graphic to an image matching its perspective. Then we'll blend the graphic with the surface and finish up by applying some realistic depth of field. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is use the vanishing point filter to add our graphic. And we're just going to use this TikTok logo right here. To do that, the first thing we have to do is add a new blank layer. So this box with the plus in it, just click that so you have a blank layer. And then go up to filter and click on vanishing point. And then all we're going to do in here is use this create plane tool to create planes. So to make a plane, you click on the corners of each side of your surface here. So I have a box, so I'm going to choose this first surface here. I just clicked on each corner to make a box. If you need to zoom in, control plus to zoom in, or you can hold X to punch in and just try and line it up as good as you can with each of the corners. So I'm going to scoot this down, punch in down here. That one looks pretty good. And down here also looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch over. You just want to make sure that your grid is blue. If you go too far off, you might get yellow or even red lines and that's not good. So move it until it's blue and looks pretty good. All right. So then from there, we have to extend or rip, tear off a new plane over on this side. So I'm going to hold control and go to this middle little dot right here and click and drag out a new plane. And then all I'm going to do is use these corners to drag them and match them up with the corners of the box on the other side. So I'm going to get it like this. And I know I'm not putting it to the corner because I'm also going to show you that if you just not holding control, just click and drag, you can extend the plane out. So I got it lined up pretty good. And then I'm just going to extend it to the edge of the box right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to hold control again this time, click on this middle one and tear off a new plane that goes across the top of the box. Now I have all three surfaces covered and we're good to go. And then just click OK. If you want to learn more about the vanishing point filter, make sure to check out the video I have linked in the description below. Now let's go get our graphic. So click on the tab of your graphic, just go select all and then edit copy, then go back to your regular project. Make sure you're selected on the blank layer, go up to filter and go back into vanishing point. This time in here, all we're going to do is go control V to paste it in. But if your graphic or logo or whatever is way too big, then just go control T to be able to resize. Just make sure you hold shift to scale it up or down. Just make sure it's a little bit smaller like this and then click on it and drag it over top of your planes here. Now you can see as I move it from one plane to the next, it changes and adjusts its perspective based on the plane. So I'm going to move this one right here and just kind of place it in the middle right there. And I'm going to click OK. If you need to rescale it up or down, then just do it in here. That's fine. So I'm going to place that in like that and click OK. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for this one over here. I'm going to add a blank layer. I'm going to go up to Filter, Vanishing Point, Control V to paste it in. And then I'm going to drag it over to this one. Now, if you see here, I'm going to have to go Control T so that I can rotate this one around. And I'm going to bring it close to the edge here so I can try and really match the perspective line there as best as I can. So that looks pretty good. I'll bring it back over to the middle like this and click OK. OK, so that's how you get your graphic onto your surface or object or whatever while maintaining the proper perspective. But it doesn't look good yet because we have to kind of blend it in with our surface. So this side is going to be a lot darker because there's the shadows and stuff over here. And this side has a lot more highlights plus some of the texture of the box we should probably have kind of applied to our graphic as well. Or if you have the like a wall surface or something, you want to do the same thing. So to blend it a little bit, we're going to start with this one over here. I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to double click to the right over here and bring up my layer style menu. And the only thing I'm going to deal with in here is this blend if tool. And I'm going to use this underlying layer, these sliders. And if I just slide this one, it deals with the shadows, like the, the, the shadow parts of this side. And you can see that it's taking away in weird chunks. This side is dealing with the highlights. And again, in weird kind of chunks. So what we want to do is we want to hold Alt 
and separate these sliders. That makes the transition a lot more smooth. So if I bring this over, it's not going to do much on this one, but if you look closely, I just want to tear away some of this like down here. You can see some of the texture of the box kind of starting to go through. So I don't want it too much. I just want a little touch of that, maybe right there. And I can do the same thing on this side. I'm holding Alt still. I'm going to separate these sliders. And on this side, since we're dealing with the highlights on this side, I'm going to see a lot more of a difference. So I kind of want to go with maybe like that. Have some of the, the, like the highlight um, light that's bouncing off this box kind of also be applied to the logo or graphic here as well. And I'm just going to click OK. Then for the other one, I'm going to do the same thing. Double click and I'm going to hold Alt and separate these sliders. And you're going to see on this one that, um, you know, the, the shadows, this side is going to be more prominent. If I slide this highlights one, it's not going to do much on this side because the highlights aren't on this side. So I'm just going to do like this and just kind of make this one kind of fall into the shadows a little bit like that. And then just click OK. Once you're done with Blend If, I would also suggest trying out some blend modes in here as well. So click on here and you can see that even that first one that pops up, you can get some different looks in here. So these ones will take away all the black, like the dark parts. These ones will take away all the whites. So you can get a different look here if you just want to get rid of the white and just have everything else. Or these ones just mess with all of it together. So let's say hard light. I think that one looks pretty good. So just select one that you want, but I'm just going to go back to normal because I like that the best for this one. So that's looking a little bit better, but we still have the issue of depth of field. So our box is perfectly in focus right here. And as we move away from that, it starts to get more blurry over here. But our logo, our graphic is perfectly sharp and in focus the whole way. So we have to kind of mimic that depth of field on both of our graphics here. To do that, just go over and click on the layer that you're going to deal with first. So I'm going to deal with this logo over here, this graphic first, and then just head down and click on this right here. And that'll put a mask on that graphic layer. And then while you're on your mask, head over and click on your gradient tool right here, and then go up to the top. Up here, just make sure you're selected on this first one, the linear gradient, and not any of these other ones, and then click on this little gradient slider thing right here. That'll open up your gradient editor. And then in there, just click on this little drop down and click on this third one right here. And that'll put a black box here and a white box there. And then click OK. Now up at the top, make sure you just click reverse so that you have white on the left and black on the right. Now, while you're still selected on your mask, you're going to use the gradient tool to click on the most in focus part of your image. So for me, it's right here and you're going to click and drag to where it is blurry. So for me, it's over here and I'm going to release. What you're going to notice is that the part that you started at is going to be more not faded. And then wherever you released, it's going to be more faded over the graphic. And if we look over at the mask, what that means is where we first clicked, that's where the white is from this gradient. And that's what's going to be in focus and not blurry. And then if we go over here and you see where the black is, which would be over here, that's what we've applied to be the most blurry. And then everything else in between is going to go from the black where it's the most blurry and then gradually go towards white, which is not blurry at all. So now to apply this, we're going to click back on the thumbnail side of our graphic and then go up to filter, blur, and head down to lens blur. In Lens Blur, all we're doing is messing with a couple things. Just make sure your source says Layer Mask and your Blur Focus right here. Mine is correct. This part is the part that's supposed to be blurry, and it is, and this part is supposed to be in focus. If yours is not, if it's backwards for some reason, then just click this Invert, and it'll flip it around. So I don't want that. I'm going to click it back. And then really all you're dealing with here is your radius. So the more you slide this up, the more the blur is going to be impacted. And if you slide it right down, then nothing's going to happen, right? So I'm going to pick somewhere in the 30s, maybe a little bit higher, somewhere like that, and just click OK. Now it looks like something happened, but you still then have to go over and click on your mask, right click on it, and then go disable layer mask. Now you can see that this part of the graphic is blurry while this part is more in focus. And then obviously I would just go through the exact same process to apply lens blur to the other graphic. 
At this point, if you feel like any part of your graphic is still too sharp, like maybe this corner right here, then just click on that layer, go up to filter, and go down to blur and Gaussian blur this time. And then I would just make my radius anywhere between like 0.5 and like 2.5, something like that, until you get kind of a softer edge around your whole graphic and then click OK. And then to finalize everything, I would just play around with opacity to get the look that you want. So I think for me, around 90% is probably looking the best. And there you go, that's your finished product. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.